It's the grand finale. It is the final Superbike race, the Northwest 200, sponsored by Merrow Hotel and Spa. Sealy on pole position from Dunlop and Harrison. Davy Todd is a non-starter. Glenn Irwin, Connor Cummings on row two. Mike Brown, John McGuinness and James Hillier on row three. And row four, Michael Rutter, Michael Sweeney, Adam McLean, David Datzer, Craig Neves, Sam West, Ernest Costamo, Brian McCormack and Paul Jordan. Just a five lap race then in prospect and again blast off for Alistair Seely on bike 34. He's looking to try and make this work if he can. But look at Michael Dunlop. Dunlop goes through Dean Harrison. He's up there in third place already as they stream along the coast road for the first time. Even uh, the last race is going to be a fantastic race, I'm sure. Almost certainly they've decided five laps. One or two of the teams didn't want a six lap race because of tyre issues. But number six, Michael Dunlop gets into your corner first. There is Dean Harrison, number five. Dean Harrison is looking for a, a bigger result than he's had so far this weekend. And what a race to do it in if he can. The feature race, the Northwest 200. Everybody wants to win this. No more than Michael Dunlop and the fans, of course, at Trackside here, would love to see the Ultimate do the ultimate race. They really would. On board with Glenn Irwin, that blasting Ducati beer monster machine. Thundering down here, accelerating as hard as he can. We're going down. Is he going to go through before station corner? There we are from the heli shot. And he doesn't quite get through. He does get through there, actually. So into third place goes Glenn Irwin. He's done it before, and he's done it again. Past our curve cam, then. There is Michael Dunlop being swamped in the slipstream. Through comes Glenn Irwin as well on the number one machine. The beer monster Ducati, and now it's side by side with Alistair, the pole sitter who has the lead at the moment. But for how long? Because here comes Irwin up the inside at University. What a great move. Yeah, really close racing here today. The Belle Claire man, uh, Irwin, we're talking oh, about. Oh, he did exactly what Glenn Irwin did to him in the last Superbike race. Anything you can do, I can do better because I didn't hit you. No, absolutely. And I'm pretty sure Glenn Irwin will be smiling at that. He'll accept that. It was a good move from Alistair Seeley. He is the wee wizard. Seely leads from Glen Irwin, and now we are streaming down towards the Mather Chicane. A little bit of uh, British Superbike style from Glen Irwin as the uh, doctors dangle with his right leg hanging out. But it is Seely that leads. Michael Dunlop in third place, but under pressure from Dean Harrison. Glen Irwin, look at those lights flashing in his visor. I love it. Red light comes on, stamp another gear, and it's all about the braking once more down into this. Fairly fast, actually, chicane there at Macroboy as they hammer down the hill, and it is quite steep going down the hill there. A lot of stones around, and a number of riders have got some right old bruises on them from stones flying up. He looks like an alien with all those flashing lights inside his helmet, doesn't he? So it is still Alistair Seeley out front, still Glen Irwin second, and still Michael Dunlop in third place with Dean Harrison putting him under some pressure, keeping him honest at least. Now then, we stream out towards Church Corner. It's tricky on this part of the course, but one of my favourite places up under the bridge, it's iconic isn't it you don't see anything like it anywhere else in the world no that's uh, for oh! sure down the inside down the inside Glenn beautiful has done it beautiful move steve that is quality from glenn Irwin there straight underneath at the uh, bet mclean chicane it rolls off your tongue and he certainly rolled through it beautifully uh, on board with james hillier uh -oh. oh james hillier gets it all wrong it lit up at the rear end and spat the young man down the road so the omg bike is on the floor and uh, the marshals will be running to pick him up. Still, Dunlop's is. Oh, out. Dunlop has pulled out. Oh, red flag, that's why. Dunlop's out because the red flag's been shown and he doesn't want to do another lap, you know. He's going to reverse it up the track into the pits. That's a bit of forward thinking from Dunlop. Smart move, not being stuck out on the circuit. But here we are on board with James Hillett. This is second gear as he turns it right. Just you watch it will flick the back end out and fling him Whoa. over the top. Nasty. But he, he, he held, held it for on, a yeah. long time. He held it for a long time before it actually finally spat him off. And sometimes you wish you hadn't, don't you? Jump the first time. But James Hillier down on the track. He'll um, hope he's okay. James Hillier having a good ride. He won't be back on the grid. We'll speak to him later, I'm sure. So the restart over five laps. Who's it going to be again? Once again, Michael Dunlop gets a sharp start from the middle on bike six, but it is going to be Alistair Seeley, surely. No, it's not. It's going to be Dean Harrison. That goes to show you how much we know here in commentary. Dean Harrison got it launched perfectly then down the coast road for the opening lap here. Five lap, the Northwest 200 restarted race. Who's it going to be this time that is the challenger? All these guys have to think about getting off the line the second time around. These clutches get a hammering on these very powerful motorcycles. You don't want to slip the clutch too much, but there's no doubt that Dean Harrison nailed it completely out of there on the Dow machine. Look at it wheeling as well up the hill. Third gear, fourth gear. You can wheelie in just about any gear on these powerful superbikes. At the Seeley in there, Michael Rutter number four, John McGuinness in there. The old boys are in there. They're still in this pack. 
Yeah, 50 odd years old. John McGuinness, Michael Rutter. Oh, listen to the sound of that. That's the Ducati horsepower. This is going to be brave if he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't oh. quite. Two wheelies from Dean Harrison as the Kawasaki tried to launch northwards. And we are at station corner, through station corner as quick as that. 150 miles an hour. And here comes Dunlop. Dunlop through, followed by the number one of Glen Irwin as that Ducati. Oh, it hide it itself in it's a It's a waggler, there. isn't it? It's a proper waggler. Yeah, Dean uh, was saying that we followed actually Glen Irwin and he reckoned the thing was a handful. It looks a handful. Look at his head moving, his body's moving, everything on. He doesn't, and he's gluing to it. Seely at the back there, 34. Up the inside goes Glen Irwin on Michael Dunlop. Over the link road then to the Valley Sally roundabout. Little wheelie from the uh, beer monster Ducati. Pulls, it grunts so well that bike, doesn't it? Just pulled out a few yards over the following trio. But extraordinary how similar they are. We've got Ducati, we've got Honda, we've got Kawasaki there in, uh, in that pack. There's nothing much in it, of course. The run from Coleraine down to Port Rush begins now. We're on board with Alistair Seeley looking into the flashing lights. He goes past Harrison first, gets a big drive down there. The BMW definitely chucks out a lot of horsepower. If you can tame it, then you can win on it. Now then, into the braking area at the Mathers Cross chicane. Used to be straight through here with a right-hand kink. Through goes Irwin, looking at the back there. Dean Harrison still hanging on, but here comes that BMW. Is it going to run past Michael Dunlop for second place? He's going to have to do the brakes down the inside. Hasn't got it done. Still Glen Irwin then from Michael Dunlop, from Alistair Seeley, from Dean Harrison. Looking back up the road, there's a big old battle going on for that fifth place as well that John McGuinness is in the thick of. And Michael Rutter, yeah. Uh, these bikes have got so much power. It's all very well saying putting the power, using the power, but you can't put it down in the lower gears. Dunlop on the inside, he's going down the inside. Uh, Metropole, has he got it? He, he has. has yeah. So he chases after Glen Irwin then. Glen Irwin is the rabbit for the chasing pack. Who's it going to be as we head up to Church Corner? A flick right now, back down the gearbox, second gear here. It's quite tight now, you can see they've extended the curb out to make it a tighter corner to slow them down up the hill, under the railway bridge, onto the coast road. This is my favourite part of the track. They've made it nice and smooth now as well for everybody with new tarmac a couple of years ago. You can see the crowd there just willing. I think it's probably Michael Dunlop on. He's doing a good job there in second place. But people hanging over the fences, over the walls, over the gardens, wherever they can get a view. Still, the sun has dropped a little bit. Track temperature's gone down a touch, but this will be perfect for the engines. They'll be working well. Still, Peter Hickman's got that lap record, a 4.18.753. They're not quite on that at the moment. Well, as the cloud came up over the coast road here, as you say, Steve, the track has cooled down. That will suit the tyres and the performance of the bikes as well. Even the wind has begun to drop at the end of the day as well, which will suit the riders too. So we enter another lap of the 8.9 mile northwest course, then, and it is going to be a cracker. Who's it going to be? Well, who would know? Glenn Irwin would love to make eight wins on the bounce, wouldn't he? The 33-year-old from Ballyclare on the Ducati. And then, of course, right behind him, Michael Dunlop there, 34 years old from Ballymena on the Honda. They're the two, but what about Alistair Seeley? Wouldn't he just like another win? Funny, isn't it, that Seeley and, of course, Irwin come from similar areas, and the fact of the matter is, is the fans definitely seem to be on Irwin's side. Seeley, perhaps, just doesn't quite have the same amount of popularity as Irwin does, despite the fact Seeley is one of the most, he is the most, winningest riders around this course. 28 yeah. wins so far. You can't imagine that will ever be beaten, frankly. Oh, a bit of a wriggle there from Michael Dunlop as he just got the power on the front wheel, comes back up in the air. Like you say, that alien eyes in there, red light coming on. Oh, <laughs> great shots indeed. And that gives you some idea as Dunlop flies by, all of them. It's Glen Irwin we're looking back at now, and Dean Harrison to your left on the uh, number five Dow Racing Kawasaki. Wheelies everywhere, taming these things. You have to have your foot over the, the brake, the rear brake, or if they've got a thumb brake, that's what they are waiting to re react with, to try and keep the front end on the ground. University corner then, full on brake, second gear, powering now over the link road. We're looking back at Glen Irwin, moving his body from one side of the bike to the other, as he looks for the best, the optimum, performance in a straight line and when you're at those speeds we just saw there it's not just the wind on the front of you it's the buffeting you get from the bike from the side of you and it really does upset the handling on the bikes they have to put extra strong bearing brackets on these bikes subframes on them for the bouncing and everything else you really have to change your bike a fair amount and stiffen everything up from all your bracketry and everything else on these bumps the milwaukee bmw blast pass michael dunlop as we head to mathers chicane and alistair seeley he certainly looks like he's having 
the smoothest ride out of everybody there. That BMW and Sealy as a combination works so well, but will it be the winning combination? Well, you have to remember that Sealy had an engine change in between. He had an overheating engine. We heard that they'd got to change the motor for that. They've done it and clearly got it working extremely well. Out of the macro boy chicane, a good viewing point as well. And that's where we're going to see some passing surely late on in this race. Down to Metropole now at Port Rush. The Coleraine Port Rush Port Stewart triangle. And again, these two looking very smooth, very calm, cool and collected through there. It's got to be said as uh, Irwin now slips back a little bit in third. Dean Harrison still fourth on bike number five. Dean's had a good weekend. He just loved to get uh, a little bit further up there. But Dean Harrison, the number machine just behind Michael Dunlop here, would just love to get up that top spot right out to the curves. They're beginning to use all of the track again. You would reckon that the tyres are just beginning to move around under them now. We're getting to that kind of mileage on these tyres that uh, they don't last longer. Than this reason why we've reduced this to five laps, so it's safe for the riders to be able to go full bore throughout the entire race. Into the chicane again, through there. Any one of these four, there's no question. They've broken away from the next guys behind. And it is the battle of the, the more seniors, Rutter and John McGuinness just behind this pack. Still Seely, still Dunlop, still Irwin. Just a little bit static on this last half a lap at the moment. You can pretty much reckon that they're weighing up where they've got to be and when they've got to be there as Dunlop cuts it really tight across the dirt on the inside of the start and finish chicane. Seely still leads. And with these bikes, it's all about getting them stood up. With the amount of power that they've got, it's no good taking those classic lines. You really, it's all about getting the bike stood up, the fat part of the tower, and using all the drive you can possibly get. A lot of these bikes don't have traction control. These are the super bikes, and they're at the spec of the BSB machines, most of them. And you've got to say that the Ducati's probably the best at that as well. Just stand it up, get it fired out of there, and Glenn Irwin's making it move now. I thought Glenn Irwin's nice wide line at the York hairpin might bring him up the hill and put him in contention here at the Mill Road roundabout as we duck right and then left and then right again out into the countryside. When you get out of the houses here, it all gets a little bit narrow between the hedges as you head up towards Station Corner. It's a bit scary in a car if you're motoring along at the normal rate, let alone being at, what, 180 mile an hour as you approach Station Corner. Look how much it narrows down there. You can actually see the guys when they're coming out the slower corners. You look carefully, they slide their body weight right to the front, try and get all their bolt over those handlebars and right up there, trying to keep the front wheel down. This is where the buffeting happens. If you get behind someone, get beside someone, just watch this. This is Glenn Irwin having a look at the track. You disappears need, away from him. He can't get through. He has to yeah. roll the throttle. You need horsepower, but they're into a headwind at this time as well. It's been a headwind all day long today, whereas it was a tailwind on Thursday night. So you've got to say that the, the whole process has changed a little bit. Horsepower is what you need, but into a headwind, it doesn't always work. Over the link, that's a good picture. Goes to show you using the hard shoulder both sides of the track as well. That's where we saw Irwin and Seely come together a little bit earlier on. <laughs> in fact, in both races, both Superbike races, they've uh, come together very nearly there. There was a few words said on the first move. I think it was uh, Glenn went through. Seely wasn't really impressed. I think he just clipped his wing on the bike. But anyway, Seely did it back. And I say, I'm sure Glenn oh, Irwin would have had a smile down there. Irwin up the inside there. Michael Dunlop has been done. And did he do Seely as well? Yes, he did do Seely as well. Well, that. That is a brake manoeuvre and a half on these two guys, two top roadsmen, and uh, Glenn Irwin has just fired himself from third to first, all in one move. Yeah, brilliant this is stuff. the time when he makes his split, if he can get away from it, he's made up some ground, that's about as big a gap as we've seen so far, on board with Alistair Seeley looking back now, when we shut the throttle as we come down here, you'll see flames out the back of the bike, I'm almost certain, there they oh, go. It's about the time of the race where he needs to make a move, I suppose, we're about half distance now. Harrison. Harrison drops in as well on Dunlop, but runs a little wide, Dunlop looks for the inside line. He's got his nose wiped off by Harrison, though. Harrison makes that third position work. They've got to go with Glen Irwin. If they don't go with him right now, Glen Irwin will be up the road. The road in front, not down on the road. We hope it's all about now these last few laps coming up. On board with Alistair Seeley again. This part is trickier than it looks from our helicam. I'm glad we stayed on it. Over Black Hill, down onto the coast road. You've got to be a little bit careful over there as well. Still tying itself knots, and this is a smooth part of the track. I'm talking about Glen Irwin. Number 34 looks steady. Alistair Seeley, Dean Harrison there in third position. Into the McLean chicane, out of the 
Be McLean chicane down to Juniper, this long right hander laying lots of rubber here. Irwin has got a lead now. He's made a real effort along this coast road as we come to the start and finish chicane. And uh, it's a short blast to the line. There it is. They'll be aware of where that is. They'll want to get it done. Back marker coming into view. No, I don't think so. Keep an eye on what's going on in front of them. Trying to make sure, look at Irwin working from one side of the bike to the other, right out to the white line, then laying a big dark black line as well. So Irwin's trying hard now. Yeah, I think Kurt Irwin's decided to try and make a break. He's got a bit of a gap. You can see him climbing all over the bike, legs out every which way. This is the slow corner. Got to be careful tapping the power coming out of York. Gets on it, and uh, you'll see Seeley again, smallish guy, trying to climb to the front of the bike, just trying to keep that front end down. Red flag, we've got a red flag here. So Glenn Irwin then. Uh, he will be, he led over the line, but of course we have yet got to work out whether we've done enough miles to call that a race. Yeah, well, well he thinks he's won. I was going to say, he won't be going out on that tyre, that is for sure. So Glenn Irwin, we think that's the result. This is the provisional results. Glenn Irwin, Alice Cecily, Dean Harrison, Michael Dunlop, John McGuinness and Michael Rutter are there, but we're waiting for confirmation. There's a bit of controversy down in the pits if there's been enough laps and actually who is the winner. We're going to find out shortly, I'm sure. Glenn Irwin and his team thinks he's won it. And I think Alistair Seeley thinks he's won it. That would be Glenn for you. <laughs> we, uh, we'll wait to see what they say, you know, but, you know, there was a race I remember back in 2009. Uh, Farquhar passed me. Uh, it started raining, Farquhar passed me, and then they declared a, a, the lap before, and I got the win, so he wasn't actually very happy back at that stage. So if, it go, if this takes that... Uh, turn then I might get the win as well so we don't really know ladies and gentlemen we have the winner of the super bike race it is Glenn Irwin well we knew that we just had to wait till everyone banged their heads together and uh, declared it but yeah no it's an amazing feeling uh, this week has been really tough I've came in in the, the best form ever and really excited to come here and you know the guys gave me a great package but I just didn't feel like uh, comfortable on it and uh, for today, they gave <laughs> but today they gave me a great bike. Uh, obviously, the race didn't pan out. Of course, I want to win a complete race. Everyone wants to see that. But uh, just a massive thanks to Paul Bird because honestly, they I think they've screwed up the engine plan and the budget for sure because that's uh, a special one we use today. I uh, don't think they'll be happy about the burnout because they've just told me I have to use it at Donington next week. So cheers, Birdman. Uh, I'm going to need a new clutch. Um, yeah, just awesome.